Hi, uh, I'm Vivek Nandakumar from Cadence. I work in the Design IP Group. Uh, and I'm here to talk about um, this in this video. Uh, so what to expect from a TLM 2.0 model or models, which is actually in two flavors, the LT and the AT. LT being the loosely timed and the AT being the approximately timed. Uh, and we're going to talk about these models more from the context of a memory subsystem and memory subsystem TLM 2.0 models. Uh, and again, uh, there are uh, um, tons of videos and materials out there which actually goes into details about LT and AT coding styles, but what I'm going to do here is to talk more in terms of the behavior and what to expect given a TLM 2.0 memory model, LT or an AT, what you get from each of these. And maybe in this video I will focus only on the LT version and uh, we'll see what AT is later. Um, <clears throat> so um, again, this is um, a very high-level abstraction of your memory subsystem. Um, and what I have here is a memory controller and the, and the memory, of course, which is the DDR. Uh, and again, I have uh, this is cadenced memory controller IP, but I've abstracted it to the point to just get this message across. Uh, typically, uh, the role of a memory controller is to actually um, uh, get the commands, uh, input commands reordered in such a way that you get maximum uh, channel utilization. So that's the that's the whole idea, right? So then you must have a reordering queue, which is what is in there. I've also thrown in a command buffer and a, re, uh, and a response for read commands, which should be read data in this case. So there's a read buffer there. So let's now walk over how uh, an LT model would function from a data flow point of view. So let's assume this is your test pinch right here. Um, there's going to be a driver, it's an active for a passive driver. It has three outstanding commands, read one, read two, and read three. And now, in the case of LT, the first command gets in. Um, I'd say that's read one. It gets accepted right away. Um, and once it gets accepted, this is um, the interesting part. So what happens is it almost instantly appears on the uh, output port of the controller. Uh, when I say almost instantly, there is some things that I'm um, not really mentioning here. There is some delays that can still be modeled, but uh, a t conventional LT model doesn't have that. Um, and also conceptually, you can assume that there is no um, delay there. So it's, it instantly appears here and here. And whatever that our read address was corresponding to, that's what, um, uh, uh, that's what, that's the read data that's going to be fetched. And the data, which is the response in this case, um, um, also comes out uh, right away. And it bypasses everything from a microarchitecture point of view. There is really nothing. It's just a black box or a hollow, an empty block. And then it, up, um, it goes back here. So that's the read one data. So let's start listing uh, out what really loosely timed uh, model is. I'll just have some space for LT later. Um, <clears throat> so there is no concept of micro-architectural modeling here. So there is no any, co it's just an empty black box. So which is no queues, no um, reordering. So you can't ex expect any of that from an LT model. Um, also, like you said, I, I, like I just said, since there is no none of no elements, no components, no modules inside, there is also no timing, no clock, uh, no waits or no delays as, uh, as such. And now, the moment the data response goes back, that's when the second read command can be fetched. Um, you, as you can imagine, there is no real queue inside that's mo being modeled, so there is no way that you could. Uh, um, store read one and take another read command. So the read response has to be back for it to accept another read, even though it was already readily available. So it, it's blocking. That's uh, another key thing to note. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to be very fast. It's going to be faster than AT. Uh, in terms of numbers, I can tell you when we talk about AT, but now it's important. No, it's extremely fast because we are not modeling, modeling any of the architectural stuff here. But the speed up comes actually from another fact, which we will see why when we see AT. Um, where is it being used? Uh, it's typically used for software development purposes. 
um, as you can imagine, um, uh, well, software development, software writers typically don't, for example, driver writers, they won't need uh, any timing or performance or delays to be modeled. All they care is the functionality. They want to read a data, uh, write the data, store it, and this is what they want, and they want to do it through this IP. And this is, in a larger environment, this is going to be like a placeholder for a future block to come in, like an RTL or an AT model, where the interface is logged in already in the LT, but everything inside is going to change. So an LT model can literally replace this AT model later. Nothing would change from an interface point of view except the, the, the behavior of it. And, and software developers care about the speed, not about the um, performance, really. So that's, um, that's, that's, that's an application for them. So if you, so that's, uh, I guess that's it for a loosely timed uh, model. Um, see you in the next video for what an LT model is. Thank you. Thank you.